My name is Brendan Hoare, I'm 55 years old and our company's called Vipio New Zealand. We are a business that's really focused on bringing to life uh, the opportunity that exists in certified organic and natural brands and products and this is really crucial for providing solutions um, that enable New Zealanders to see beyond the pesticide regime. So I've been very fortunate, my life's work's been involved with the whole organic scene and I've been doing that since I was a very young guy. Um, and that came, really came about from an experience I had um, when I was working in horticulture. And I had an experience of pesticide where the first orchard I worked on, which was a mixed orchard, uh, I came to work one day and there was just hundreds of birds dead all across, all around the shelter belts. And I didn't understand what the hell had gone on. And I'd sprayed them overnight for fear of them affecting the crop the next day. And something quite deep I realised was, was wrong with that. And I just knew inherently I really had to do something about that and that future uh, had to change, that this current behaviour could, could, couldn't work like that. So really what we're about is a systems change in the food system uh, and that's got to happen. And that's got to happen through a strategic process. And I've spent my life studying how change works at scale and how we go through processes to do that. I've been in academia, I've been a horticulturist, horticulture is my trade. Uh, and I taught about resource management and how to create productive landscapes that aren't reliant on fertilizers and pesticides. I like to uh, learn from elders and indigenous folk. I spent about four or five years wandering um, and working with farmers of 40 centuries, farmers from Asia, about how they sustain themselves on the same piece of soil over time. And I embedded myself, I just worked in villages, but I was documenting the whole time to build a preferred future and articulate that, uh, that is pesticide free. Uh, we have to find markets for people to be able to take their products into. So about 10 years ago, I uh, continued to do that sort of uh, human development process about bringing groups and organizations together, uh, but also about operating a commercial future. So by Pure New Zealand, what we're about is taking uh, micro, small and medium brands. The smallest company we've worked with is $20,000 up to about a $50 million business. And what we do is help them understand what the organic market uh, is really about. And we offer them pathways through and into those markets from you know, consulting advice and, and training. Um, we do research and development and we actually trade. Um, and that's crucial. It's not easy work. But uh, here's the good news. The organic market is the fastest growing multi-food sector in the world, growing at double digits year on year. No other market's growing like it. This is the future. Uh, clear. And this is not just, this is absolute trends. And it, the trend is becoming um, more profound. So we're currently globally about a $60 billion sector, and within five years that's going to become $90, $90 billion. So that's the sort of growth we're experiencing. And uh, this whole notion about being by pure New Zealand is that we believe there's no better country positioned globally to really uh, service the communities of which we have a relationship with. The markets that want what we've got don't live in a country like us. In a group of companies in the US, about 200 of them paid to do some deep, deep dive research into what were the key messages. The key messages that they found was the number one thing why people engage with organic was because of pesticides. That is no surprise to those in the organic sector, but it was leaps and bounds above everything else. And there was five key reasons why uh, pesticides were so important. The number one was personal health. People uh, are just quite aware of their own and their children's health. Remember what's driving this is women. Um, and in a marketing sense as women of sort of childbearing age. And uh, they know that the effects of pesticides and around them are affecting their own health. That's quite clear. So the other key thing was pesticides and the effect of the environment. There's this consciousness raising that it's not just about them, but it's also about the wider environment. That includes butterflies, includes a whole insectary, it includes bees. And they want to have used purse power to affect change. So that was number two. 
And the third key thing was around this whole wider wildlife. So, right, we've got insects and environment but and water and things like that. But it was what was happening when, you know, because we're all learning about ecology, we're all learning that we're all interconnected, we're all learning that we're one. Science and genetics is telling us that. So there was this unknowing and research continually coming out that applying of pesticides, which is a generic term for fungicides and herbicides, the whole wang dangle, okay? So that that was affecting wildlife and affecting birds and affecting... Uh, a wider wildlife type of environment. And the fourth key one was about this, this sort of future generations. The effect that this will have if they're digesting, if they're evolved, if this is affecting the wildlife. Because we know that water doesn't just hop into streams and appears. Water can take sometimes hundreds, thousands of years to appear into the something that we can drink. So we're actually contaminating our future. We're reaching into our future. We're destroying our future. And the last one, which may not be of a consciousness here so much in New Zealand, but as part of a global, was the GMO piece. Because all GMOs that are commercial all rely on pesticides as part of the regime that they're involved in. So these are really powerful indicators. And those are key things why uh, we want no pesticides in New Zealand and an organic future. Uh, we don't need pesticides, okay? so uh, pesticides come from a way of thinking and this is uh, you know, part of my personal learning and part of my experience in reading from a very wide spectrum of work. It's really a culture, so thoughts are things. The way we think affects our language and our language affects our actions. So. One of the core principles of um, organic is that we're at peace with the soil and we're looking at working with systems, not at constant fighting them. So we're not a warfare. We don't use that mentality in our principles and practices and our philosophies. And, but that's a continual learning part um, for the organic community. We're not a static community. We're continually evolving. We don't name or blame nature. Okay? We don't call things pests, we name insects. And as managers of the total environment, the total environment, we accept that there are insects, the more diverse our environment, the more stable our ecology, the more insects, the more stable the populations are. So it's about a working ecology. So in principle, when we're working with organic systems, we're working with ecology in action in food production and we're resource managers. When we have an outbreak of a certain insect or a certain pathogen, we name it and we accept responsibility for not managing that environment rather than blaming nature and going out and nuking it or destroying it or being fearful of it. It takes two, three, five, more realistically about seven years to build a total stable ecology to sustain um, productive food systems without all those inputs requirements. You know, I've been heavily involved in leadership roles of the organic sector here and internationally. Uh, I've been president of Soil and Health Association, the mighty Soil and Health. I've been around for 75 plus years. Um, I've been on the World Board of Organic. I've been on the Board of Biogro. I've been the executive chair of the national body and the CEO. A key piece of our work has been to get the term organic regulated with a national standard. If of the organic sector, we've been having uh, environmental management systems and certification for over 35, 40 years. Because it's about a customer assurance about what we're doing on farm. We understand there needs to be a relationship that's close. So we have a certification system, but unless a government actually regulates it, anybody can call anything organic. And that standard is voluntary. Historically, that's been kind of okay, and we've fumbled our, cell, our way through that and we've even been able to export. But the rest of the world has moved far faster on from that and their the rest of the world is regulated. So Australia and New Zealand are the last two countries or major trade sort of nations in the world that, have, that do not have regulation. It's been probably 20 years from inception uh, and the last six years a big effort and last year, or well, 2018 actually, uh, Pan Party apolitical, we made sure it was really fat, we got all political parties, the whole community, organic community agreeing that's what we want, a lot of process of engaging and enrolling 
and they've agreed to that. We're going to be tabled, uh, an organic act is going to be tabled into New Zealand uh, early this year and a discussion is going to take place uh, publicly through the um, select committee and this is going to really start to shape the way that organic is seen in New Zealand. Usually what happens when you get an organic regulation in place, there, it affects and will, it is affected by and will affect other regulations. It's not just held out in isolation. So normally what would come with that was the pesticide reduction policies. Because you can't be at one moment saying, look, this is the place to go and government indicating, because to commit a whole resource to an act is a major piece of work. What, comes to ha what has to come with that is a whole lot of supportive uh, regulations and frameworks and initiatives to enable that to truly come to fruition. And globally what they do is have pesticide reduction policies and um, other systems to protect that into, down into regional governments where that can be administrated. And so watch the space because we will need a pesticide reduction policy to protect organic practices and uh, methods um, nationally. You know, sheep, beef, dairy, wine, all the horticultural production you could think of, cosmetic industries, all the way through to, it's certified all the way through to retail and so for customer assurance. So it helps answers a lot of questions for what's happening in New Zealand's primary sector, moving away from a real production oriented mentality, because what the sector does, the organic sector, is it has, because it's connected with the consumer as part of a standard, we already have a means of actually making that communication and supply chain smooth. We sell most of our organic product internationally and the international consumers, their number one concern is that they don't want pesticides on land and in the environment, period. So we're going to have to be responsive if we want to play high. If we want to play real, we're going to have to be responsive to that. Now, simultaneously with the Organic Act emerging, we're going to have to have climate change regulation. There's going to be biodiversity um, legislation. So we're going to have all this other water all coming in together. And I find this very exciting. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for us to realise our true potential internationally. And what I can also assure you, and certainly a lot of the work that we do, is we bring in really key international people. They want us to be world leaders. They want New Zealand to demonstrate how we can truly enable an, eco, you know, an organic eco-nation uh, in energy and packaging, or they want everything. It's got to be non-GMO and it's got to fit into those markets beautifully and they're prepared to resource that. So we work with uh, a whole suite of people wanting and willing in both the US and European markets and in Asia and in Australia wanting us to win. So there's the challenge. I just think it's uh, uh, a gift. I think it's an absolute gift. Um, dare we take it. Uh, the mighty Loth Lorien. So this is uh, BioGrow certified, but now more demanding, vegan certified. So this is also what's happening in markets, is market being certified organic is just entry level. It's not good enough. So carbon neutral, vegan, they want more, show me. So we've got to have really good stories. This is a wonderful story. Uh, so this is particularly interesting, right? So to really give, give customer assurance, certified organic from Biogrow, certified organic by Assure Quality, who we are certified organic exporter, of course, we, our offices are certified organic. Uh, we're in a certified organic farm and, and you know, really try to present that. Uh, but it's also recertified in Taiwan for that particular market. That's the level, if you want to play high, you've got to be fit and really um, strong. So we don't do this thing very well. So this is what Asia does with our products. They turn them into, so it's, you know, this is Supreme Coffee Award winner. We really downplay how cool we are and how fantastic we are, uh, they don't. They pump it up. And so we've got to learn to kind of pump ourselves up a little bit. Um, but they do beautiful gift packaging, um, beautiful storytelling of what actually goes on and enable people to feel like they're a part, have a relationship. Uh, we do vinegars, kiwi fruit vinegars, people. This is all for health. So I say the key thing driving this is people's personal health. So certified organic uh, kiwi fruit vinegar, and this is uh, emerging markets and around understanding our mental well-being and being able to affect that. So um, we take people on a journey, we help people get certified organic, 
and find markets that work. The world wants us to be that pure, organic, eco-nation. We've got to be responding to, to, to people's needs, listening, be a much better listener as a country. And I, <laughs> I mean, if you notice to do anything, the world doesn't want any more poisons put on their food and their environment. They want clean, honest product with people from the land working hard, and they'll support that and work with that. Uh, and that's what we support.